we are going to study in module 4 basically it is io interfacing io devices io controllers parallel buses serial transmission io software so all this ash and then chapter 8 so directly we are moving to chapter 8 so we are going to study all this so io devices so you can see here what is the job of so you have studied see if there is a microcontroller right so if you want to control anything so if this is an input side so this is at the output side think if i tell you to read one switch right whether switch is on or off depending on that the output bulb the output bulb should be either on or off so something like that so you need input devices as well as output devices so this is what we are going to study in this chapter so input transducers so there are various input transducers what is the job of an input transducer an input transducer or a sensor senses some physical property so it is going to sense some physical property and generates an electrical signal that corresponds to the property so it is going to generate some electrical signal so our microprocessor it is going to understand only the digital value so if this is a transducer if it is sensing any any analog signal then compulsorily along with the input sensor i need the signal conditioning basically consists of analog to digital converter so from the sensor whatever analog data is there that has to be converted into digital form then that has to be given to the microprocessor for study think now if you are reading some temperature right so temperature sensor i am using some thermostat or thermocouple all those input devices so if i read if the temperature it is in terms of degrees so that has to be converted whatever the analog value is there that has to be converted into digital then the microprocessor will read so after sensing the temperature again i think you you will have written the program so we had seen the vat container example starting you remember the level has to be indicated and the temperature should be between 25 degrees to some 40 degrees something like that right so temperature sensor it is reading so processor if it is less than 25 or more than 40 what we had it written a buzzer should occur right a buzzer should be putted so that we had told so the processor depending the reading on the temperature you will have written the program here so if the temperature is more than 25 degrees or less than 40 degrees more than 40 degrees or less than 25 degrees then send one signal that means what if one is being sent then whatever the buzzer you have connected here the buzzer will be activated and putting of the buzzer will take place right so that is very important so after digital conversion also at the output side think now our own microphone and the speaker at the output side if you have the speaker here so again the digital data has to be converted into analog processor giving you the digital data this has to be converted to a analog so at the output side you need at the output side you need digital to digital to analog converter as a processing so basically if you see the structure standard structure what will be there standard structure what will be there there is a processor sitting here microprocessor right so at the input side so you have the sensors so sensors you are getting the in input side then in between you have analog to digital converter and at the output side what will be there at the input side if there is analog to digital converter at the output side what will be there just now i told what will be there vaishnavi signal as a signal processing what will be there at the output side kirti any one of you can answer what will be there at the output side can you hear me all of you Chandana. Go 
Vaishnavi Kirtinak Sumalata, can you hear me, all of you? Opposite of input and user, ma'am. Opposite of? Input and user. Hmm. So input side, if analog to digital converter is there, output side, what will be there? Just now I told you, what will be there at the output side? Digital to analog one. Digital to analog. Very good. Digital to analog converter is there. So that will be again given to the output transducer. Output transducer. Because uh, all devices doesn't want the digital data. I told you an example of your microphone and the speaker. Input side, if the microphone is there, so whatever the data, microphone in that data will go as an analog signal, but the processor will not understand. So at the input side, I need analog to digital converter. So some processing you are going to do to the your voice signal. Then if you want to finally give to the speaker at the output side, so if the speaker is there at the output side, then digital data will not work. So again, you are converting that to digital to analog signal, then you are connecting to the speaker so input side transducers are there output side transducers are there in between at the input side as a signal processing you have analog to digital converter at the output side you have digital to analog converter all of you are with me Ian Eller silent Kunti Range you don't answer Chandru? Manjun kade admission file is kundu. So that's what here, an input transducer or a sensor senses some physical property and generates the electrical signals that corresponds to the property. So it is going to generate some electrical signal. So it could be either analog or digital. So what about the output transducer? An output transducer, on the other hand, uses an electrical signal and causes the physical effect so using that electrical signal i told you at the output side if you have the speaker so it is going to take that electrical signal and convert it into sound waves so electrical signal to cause the physical effect so that is the job of the output transducers so we are going to study in detail the different input transducers and output transducers in the next slides so input devices so first one so once uh, uh, if we uh, feel that uh, what are the input devices first thing we will come into our mind is input devices keyboards and keypads and keyboards so you can see how they are being connected how they are being connected you have four rows row one row two row three and row four so four rows are there and three columns C1, C2, and C3. So this is four cross three keyboard matrix. Antandre est connect mod bodu nalk murle hundred. Twelve switches you can connect. So what are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then dot star this is and zero and uh, ash. So any keys you can uh, specify there. So at every intersection of every each and row and column, a key is being pressed there. Hello. Madam, 
मंजुन कड़े कल कोडिल मंजुन कड़े गंगाधर स्वामी बेदीवेदिशन फैल गंगाधर स्वामी सर ऐन बेद नोडर अंत ना स्लीवन को So at the intersection of every row and column, a key is being pressed. So whenever think now, if I have pressed key number one, then what will be excited? Column number one, C one, and R one will have the signal. So uh, depending on that, the keypad will be sensed. So two is intersecting at C two and R one. Then three at C three and R one. So row wise, each key will be sensed there. Right. So total twelve keys are being. Uh, so by four cross three matrix, we can fix up to twelve keys. So keypad switches are arranged in a scanned matrix manner. So the same thing. Push button switches are used in the keypads. So for example, phone security system consoles or ATM machines. etc so only less number of keys will be there a more common technique is to arrange the key switches in a matrix as shown in the figure and to scan the matrix for closed contacts so we are going to scan the matrix first we are going to excite each rows then we are going to check whether whether any of the key is being pressed or not so when all the key switches are open all the column lines that is c1 to c3 c1 to c3 enadavala ella open iddaga What will happen when the all key switches are open? All the column lines that is C1 to C3 are pulled high by the registers. So see there, all the columns C1, C2, C3 through registers, through registers they are connected to plus V, right? So when all the keys are open, then all so all the columns red will be high only. So when all the key switches are open, all the column lines that is C1 through C3 are pulled high by the registers. When a key switch is closed, think now if any of the key is being pressed. Now key number four is being pressed. That is which is connected to column number C1 and row. Which row? If four key is being pressed, it is connected to what column and what row? If key number four is pressed, what column and what row? R two and C one, mom. Row two and column one. Row two and column one. So, when key switch is closed, one column line is connected to one row line. Yes or no? So R one through R four, any one. So if key eight is pressed, now he is telling think now if key eight is pressed, which row and which column is sensed now? If key eight is pressed, row three and column C two. Row three and C two. So. If key eight is pressed, C two is pulled low when R three is driven low. So like this, which key is being pressed, you are going to identify. A simpler approach. A simpler approach is to provide a register into which the processor can write. So what it is better? What we can do? So we can use one register wherein whatever whichever key is being pressed, that data will be written. So a simpler approach. This is very important. See there. A simpler approach is to provide a register into which the processor can write the values to be driven on the row lines, and another register for the processor to read the values from the column lines. So what is being done? So for our keypad matrix, what will be done? One output register is there, and one input register is used so that. it can detect which row and which column is being activated so since each of the key switches is a mechanical switch it is subject this is again the, the later it is subjected to the contact bonds so first point is what so to simplify our reading you provide one output register and one input register then next as we are using the mechanical switches there 
so contact when you release the key there will be a switch bonds so the embedded software running on the processor needs to scan the matrix repeatedly so repeated once twice uh, repeated press mark bitu so which key is being pressed anta nodkanta irbeku okay so that's how we are going to uh, check for the key pressed sometimes even what will happen two keys will be pressed so there will be conflict so which key you have to read right so in that case so continuously the keypad matrix will be scanned to see that the proper key is being pressed so you can see the figure shows what here a keypad matrix with an output register for driving the row lines so output register for driving the row lines and an input register a register is nothing but what inside what will be there register is nothing but what all of you register is made up of what flip flops ma flip flops very good so internally flip flop itself one single flip flop is going to store only one bit whereas register more number of bits so if i say sorry late re again management worker and admissions in the interchange so if uh, so if i say the processor is having a register register is nothing but what register is nothing but n number of flip flops if i say 8 bit register then there will be 8 flops sitting there right eight flops will be there each one one flip flop so register is nothing but a number of flip flops is going to make a register this is what you have studied in digital circuits so each uh, so understanding the flip flops is also very important you can see even the clock symbol is shown there right with an edge clock symbol so a keypad matrix with an output register for driving row lines and an input register for sensing the columns so input register will sense the columns and output register will sense the rows that's how the keypad matrix is designed so this question is also compulsory input devices explanation he will give you so that is keypads and keyboards so next input devices knobs and position encoders we'll stop at this point so when you come for the next class you have to draw the figures for uh you start with module 4 io interfacing io devices so first device that we have studied is keypads and keyboards so these two figures also you should draw and come along with that last topic signal integrity so how the noise is introduced to reduce noise what is being done all right so that also you complete and come for the next class is it clear to you all all of you